Resident Evil 4 has an awesome randomizer, and there's a seeding function that is perfect for races. By putting the same settings and the same seed number into the randomizer, you can guarantee that everything is random. But random in the exact same way for everyone that uses this seed. That means you'll get the same starting inventory, same enemies, and the same merchants. To test this out, I had some fun and challenged the absolute god of Half-Life speedrunning, Moody, to a randomizer race. While Moody has held the world record in Half-Life for god knows how long, he is also really good at Resident Evil 4 and has even held world records in Devil May Cry a few times. Basically, he's a god gamer, no matter what he plays thus making him great competition for the likes of me. The rules are simple. We're going to randomize the starting inventory, the merchant's inventory, enemies, and the newly added merchant price randomizer. Three, two, one, go. All right, here we go, striker seed. Interesting, okay. That means not only are the items that the merchant sells random, but the prices of these items are also going to be random. You can get a rocket launcher, but it's $100,000 instead of the normal $30,000. Or you could get really lucky and it's only $800. This drastically changes the strategies for each run, making less viable options more viable and others even less viable options than normal. All right, what's he got? Flash grenade, rocket launcher. Oh my God, but it's 60 grand. Okay. And TMP, but it's 30 grand. We can work with this. Oh, oh shit. In our race, we both started with the broken butterfly. This was really lucky. Interesting. Okay. Having a magnum early on means you won't be getting much ammo for a long time, but it also gives you the tools you need to stop very bad things from happening when you get stuck in a room with like Verdugo or JJ. Oh my god, no! There's a JJ, watch out. The downside is we have no crowd control whatsoever. This means that we're going to have to be very good with our movement to be able to manage running past all of the enemies. This is especially true when trying to run past these stealth chainsaws. Dude, this room is cursed. Fuck. The first holdout in the village actually has two ways of beating it. You can either kill 14 enemies or wait out about three minutes. Depending on what enemies you get, it's obviously faster to kill 14 enemies, but it's rare that it's actually possible. With the blicky in my hands and the parent teacher association chasing on my tail, I decided it would be my best option to shoot my way out instead of waiting. Yeah, there we go. I did it. Hog. Moody decided to wait it out, but once he heard that I shot my way out, he opted to do the same. Okay, you dead again? You good? Okay, I got it too, let's go. While it started out the same, our routes would soon diverge in some very important ways. The prime reason for this would be the merchant. Our first merchant check would change our priorities when it comes to damage output and speed. He sold flash grenades, the broken butterfly that we already had, the TMP, and the rocket launcher. Here is the catch though. The TMP was 33,000 bucks and the rocket was 62,000. Those are both over double what they normally cost. Thankfully, we both got the 10 gram from killing the chainsaw guy in the village, but we would need a lot more than that if we wanted the rocket to kill all the bosses that we might encounter later on. So the new goal was established obtain grain. Udi was more financially responsible than me and was able to afford the TMP. Did you see the merchant? Yeah, just checking. I'm missing 590. Okay, I, I can do this. Yeah, I bought the TMP just in case. Not that it would come in handy in this room at least. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> it's fucking useless in this room. See? <laughs> yeah. However, this investment would make navigating a lot of the later rooms much easier for him, as he now has the best crowd control weapon in the entire game. In my endless hubris, I thought it wouldn't be necessary. My superior movement would carry me throughout the game flawlessly. So, uh, oh, yeah, what the fuck? At this point, Moody had a small lead on me, and it would be neck and neck for quite a while. The shotgun from the village and the broken butterfly, along with a rocket or two, should be more than enough to absolutely destroy every boss we encounter. I think that I can get away with this. I'm looping I cannot! I cannot! I cannot get away with this. I thought I could. Oh, no. <laughs> I could not get away with that. Just in case though, I would be picking up as many nades as I could. The broken butterfly would come in clutch in the next room as there was two JJs on this bridge. The only way past them was to kill them. Well, at least one of them. I sacrificed some very limited magnum ammo for this. Unfortunately, I decided to do this after I lost all of my health and healing because my brain is smoother than a marble. There's two JJs. Oh, I'm dead. 
Maybe not. Okay, I have a, I have a plan. No! Oh! Survive. Survive! Oh my god, I did. Okay. Coincidentally, this smoothness would also forget to put Moody's perspective on my stream. So I tabbed out to do so in the middle of the race. We see each other? No. He's streaming. Ooh, nice magnum ammo. We should have done a multi-stream. Wait, here, I'm gonna do the hacker man's thing and I'm gonna put his stream on my stream. Moody did the same thing when we came to JJ, but him being more liberal with his resources rewarded him with a ton of heals in the crow room in exchange for a single fire grenade. Killed him. Nice. This would cause him to start building up a more substantial lead because, you know, he's not limping everywhere. I'm, I'm limping, so I have bigger problems. <laughs> I don't know why, but I always spend like half the randomizer limping. He would also get a perfect Del Lago and my rust would start to show here. <laughs> I got perfect. You got a perfect Lago. Shit. Doing all right, glad to hear. Can I get a four hit, please? Oh, I missed. Yeah, somehow I managed to get perfect Del Lago. That's okay, I got an okay one. The TMP was a well-worthy investment for Moody, as he would be able to grab a ton more treasures with basically no time loss associated with it. His foresight would give him a huge step up economically, but my experience would definitely be coming in clutch. You see, while Moody has a better time than me in New Game Pro, he's never ran no merchant, nor has he done as many randomizers as me. This leaves some holes in his game, particularly on bosses. In New Game Pro, you just use rocket launchers to kill them all, and while that is possible in some seeds, this seed had a rocket launcher more than two times as expensive as normal, and we had no inventory upgrades, so we couldn't even fit one if we wanted to. The first boss would turn itself into a regenerator, and Moody had no idea how to fight it. Oh, it's, it's, it's faster. Uh, this is fine, I think. I'm not sure how to kill it, though. He dumped all of his ammo and nades into the thing, and it just wouldn't die. With no rocket and no special scope, this thing is super tanky. But once I finally caught up, my no merchant pro experience would give me a huge edge here. You can really quickly knife regenerators to death if you blow off their legs. Being the nice guy that I am, I told him about the strategy too, but only after I had caught up. This is where being behind actually gives you an advantage. I know exactly what I'm about to fight because I'm watching Moody fight it right now and he's wasting so much ammo. I'm running out of bullets alarmingly fast. Yeah, you might want to restart and knife him to death. If you blow off oh, his yeah. leg, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This brings us to neck and neck again, heading into grabbing Ashley. It wouldn't last for long though, as Sandy Cheeks decided to spread mine in this race and totally screwed me over in Dark Barn like four times. Oh, no. The next merchant would add the TMP stock in a large black bass. Thank God. But I knew this would be the last merchant before Castle, so I needed to buy a rocket for one of the bosses on the way, just in case. My inventory was tighter than Ashley's pants though, so I needed to make some room. Moody decided to sell the broken butterfly to make some room, which I think was a mistake. My strategy was just gonna have no shotgun ammo at all. Wait, my strategy was to what? Anyways, the cabin is almost always one of the hardest rooms of the randomizer. This is because if you stick to a non-pistol weapon, then you will almost always have no ammo for this section. Thankfully, I stacked nades for this. Even so, I was barely scraping by with what I had, and I was praying for shotgun ammo. I'm doing fine. I'm just like, really curious as to why the game is so mean and won't give me shotgun ammo. Moody had less nades, but a ton of ammo for the TMP, making this an absolute breeze for him. Yeah, I'm trying to do, do some crowd control myself, and yeah, just let do is do everything. We both finished cabin on the first try, keeping the race as close as it could be. Yes, okay, first try cabin, nice. I think we both first strike cabin, which is good because that's like a huge risky yes. part. The next big hurdle would be the big cheese, Mendez. This boss has two phases, and in the randomizer, there will always be a random boss for the first phase and a random boss and a second phase Mendez in the second phase. You don't have to kill the Mendez in the second phase usually, but it is suggested. Otherwise, you might be killed by him on the way out instead. We started the fight with a Super Salvador, which would be pretty simple, at least if you have the Magnum. Next was Gigante, and this is exactly what I was saving the rocket for. Oh! Oh! That was terrifying. Your turn, bitch. You had to kill both bosses? Yeah, I had a rocket launcher, so... I no, mean... You don't have to kill both of them. You I killed kill Gigante, Mendes. but... Okay, we're fine. That was scary. I was hoping the rocket launcher would kill both of them, but then Mendez is still alive and I was like, oh god. Finally at the newest merchant, once we made it out into the castle, he sold what we had been waiting for. The extra large attach case. I did it. Thank you. I did the thing. 
Oh god, what have I done? It was pricey, but I could swing it for sure. I went all in on this super large case with the assumption that I would have no problems with inventory for the entire rest of the run, saving me a ton of time. It broke my bank though, and dude, with this inflation? I can't afford anything else. Moody opted for the medium attach case and to upgrade the capacity on his shotgun and TMP. This refills their ammo, giving him plenty of ammo for the coming rooms. Unfortunately, he would still have some trouble with some of these red robe fucks in the next one. Oh yeah. Ashley, get up. Ashley! Not having a good long range weapon was really screwing me in the castle. I had no ammo at all, and I needed to kill this catapult guy, and he was so tanky! I thought maybe I could cheese him and make him disappear with the cannon, but it was so slow, and it was never gonna work. Crank! Barges for error zero. Wait, shit, Ashley got grabbed. Even the stuff I stood in for this guy. I want this money. Fuck! This problem was only getting worse at Waterhall. This is when I'd invest in the TMP finally, learning the errors of my ways. Moody would do the first phase of Waterhall much slower than me. He meticulously killed every enemy one at a time, whereas I did what I always do go for broke and just run to the end. Dab on the haters. I would die three or four times and he would get it first try. He definitely saved a ton of time on me here, building a nice lead for himself. Finally, I'm out. The second phase of Waterhall was an absolute nightmare with the weapons that I had. The only long range weapon that we could use to defend Ashley was the TMP, and I had almost no ammo for it. No way! Oh my god, my aim is too good. Fuck. Did you save it? No, no, I accidentally shot the t I got shot the dynamite in his hand as he's picking up Ashley and blew everyone up. We use the safe enemies randomizer option, which is supposed to make the game more stable, causing less crashes by removing some enemies from the randomization pool. I think that all this does is actually remove Navisadors. Needless to say, I love this option. The pecking order would maintain until we got done playing with Ashley, when we would go back to get our free rocket launcher. We could buy one, but money was tight, and there is one that you can get for free at the cost of only about a minute or so. We both decided to go back and get it. For some reason though, Moody decided he wanted to go get the broken butterfly too. This backtrack was much longer than mine, and it had some of the most cursed rooms in the whole randomizer on the way. It's just an army of JJs. Okay, f fuck it out. This detour lost him several minutes and some vital resources, actually putting me back on pace with him when he was done backtracking. Then we arrived at the knight's room. Can we talk about this room for just a moment? You and me? Fuck this room. I love it. It's beautiful and cursed, but it's fucking terrible and I love that about it. For whatever reason, the enemies in this room can walk through walls. It's fucking nightmare fuel and it always is one of the hardest rooms in the whole randomizer. Not to mention, one of the most packed. Anyways, just enjoy this room. Oh my god, okay. Wait. No, they can definitely go through walls. You liar. What? Wait. No. They yes. Go through for me. Ah! Okay. Lucky you. I got punished for my last. <laughs> Fuck. That's such bullshit. <laughs> That's so lame. Oh my god, dogs. You're not even mauling my face. You're mauling the air next to my face. Fuck. That's such bullshit. <laughs> That's so lame. Okay, maybe I don't like that they can go through walls. Maybe I lied. Come Bitch. on, stop. Eating me. Once in the sewer, we have yet another merchant that could potentially give us the striker, but he gives us the riot gun instead. And spoilers, but I've never actually gotten a striker on any randomizer seed I have ever had. I swear it's curse or something. No striker, of course. Great. Right? Radical. Luckily, the boss that replaced Verdugo was Krauser, who was always a welcome addition to any room. Him being so easy to kill with a knife means that we can save all of our resources for later instead. There's the easiest boss. Oh fuck, except for when he eats your inputs. Bro, chill! 
I, I saved by the door? That's what I'm talking about. This boulder room was also cursed. There being a JJ in the room full of archers made it nearly impossible to run through. So I decided to use the broken butterfly to snipe the JJ. My aim is impeccable. I'm actually a god. Fuck. That's cringe. Then I did a no merchant speedrun trick called boulder skip to well, skip the boulder. All right, okay. So far, so good. And I made it out. Moody doesn't know how to do this trick, so he opted to use the rocket launcher on the boulder itself. This would save his ass in this room, but then for the next room, he wouldn't have that deer rocket. Okay, but the next room is going to have a JJ and a Gigante. I know. It wouldn't be the last time I saw JJ, though. The double Gigante fight would have a JJ as well, and a very scary combination at that. Thankfully, I had a really big gun saved especially for this. Moody, unfortunately, did not. So he had to use his newly upgraded Broken Butterfly to kill JJ and dunk the Gigante. Okay. Uh, one of them is down already. Okay, shake it now. Okay. Both of us lacking rockets, we head into the last stretch before island. I grabbed one from the merchant, but this would be our last chance to do so before Salazar. And Moody did not get one. Once at the minecart, I would have yet another advantage having run no merchant. I knew the minecart skip variation that does not require Dipman. I offered to teach Moody the skip. It's pretty simple, but he refused and took the ride of shame. Nah, it's fine. It's just castle guys. Thankfully, due to my griefing and the lack of Dipman, minecart skip isn't that much faster than just riding the minecart normally. But I really needed the ammo, so doing the minecart skip itself was super worth it. I already had a lead going into Salazar, and it would be greatly extended after the fight itself. With Mooney not having a rocket launcher, he had to fight the boss normally. And even with an upgraded broken butterfly, this can take quite a long time. Thank fuck for that I upgraded my uh, butterfly like earlier. Once on island, there is one final chance for the striker. And of course, no dice. Fisher, Matilda rifle yep no fucking that was the last check it really was tortoise and the hare i was the hare dashing ahead past everything playing super risky this caused lots of deaths and huge time losses and moody was the tortoise taking his time and meticulously clearing every room but this led to him making way less mistakes and having way less deaths leading to a more consistent overall run once i died in the wrecking roll room i had already given moody many chances to catch up oh never mind no i'm not done with... i have to do wrecking ball room again okay we ended up both being on the truck at the same time, with me about two minutes ahead. That's a scary position to be in, because dying at almost any point in the truck would lose me about two minutes. Thankfully, I would not die during the truck. But Ashley sure as fuck would. Bro, dude, they're on a fucking mission, and their mission is to give Ashley a haircut. Heading into 5-4, I was shocked to see Taser guys. Sorry. Video's almost over and I'm out of jokes. The lead I had absolutely had disappeared at this point as Moody's more consistent play was rewarding him with huge time save on me in the late game. It was all gonna come down to War Room. The rumor come out, does Waifu is gay? Waifu is gay is the most discussed in the media in the few years ago. Even it has happened in 2012, but some of the public still curious about what is exactly happening and to be the reason there is a rumor comes out about is gay. At that time, he became the massive social networking rumor. I got a very serious YouTube comment the other day of someone asking me if I was gay. I didn't respond. I'm shy. Hi. Oh, hi. This is... This isn't... Okay, never mind. There's no way for me to catch up if I do shit like that. I believe the run was this close. Yeah, me either. It's fucking super close. I've never seen a rando be this close before. I, I've only done random races with Dante and I always win by like 30 minutes.
Alright, GG. 257. 247. 247 dead? IGT is 247.58. 247. 39? <laughs> it was super close. But we came to the conclusion that I won only because we didn't run load remover timers. I finished before him, but I had a slower in-game time. This is because I didn't pause the game when I put Moody's stream on my stream. So I put your stream up on my stream, but I didn't pause when I did it. I just tabbed out. So I had like 30 seconds where I was tabbed out, but not paused. Okay, fuck. Okay, yeah, that was that. I think that kind of clears it. But I think I, I think I edged it out by like a couple seconds. We would have never imagined that a randomizer race could actually be as close as this one, but this one was really down to the wire. When we have a rematch in the future, which we certainly will, we'll be definitely using official speedrun timers that remove loads to make it official who is the victor. While I do say that I took the dub this time, there will for sure be a rematch, as it was a ton of fun. It seems like Tortoise and the Hare race, the Hare can actually win sometimes. At least, as long as the Tortoise forgets to buy a rocket launcher. Thanks so much for watching, and go check out Moody, he's an absolute god gamer that runs a bunch of games at a super high level, including RE4, and he's just a great guy. Also, if you want to watch the full race, that'll be up on the Archive channel. Links in the description below. Stay stylish, y'all.